The subject of this week's project is something I like very much, which is mushrooms. I've only recently come into this mushroom obsession. It started around November 2022, um, right around Thanksgiving. It was my first real jaunt into going out into the world and noticing and identifying mushrooms that I could find. And since I started, I haven't really been able, I really haven't been able to stop. Uh, I'm just really fascinated by them and by fungi in general. And there's so many different kinds to find. It's like collecting Pokemon in a way. Um, the subject of this video um, is one that I actually have personal experience with. So that's always really fun. Um, it's got a few cool names. Personally, I like calling it Dryad Saddle. It sounds really whimsical, and I love whimsy. Another popular name for it is the Pheasant's Back or Polyporus Squasmosis. Um, young specimens are edible, and I actually tried foraging for them this week, and I cooked it up and I ate it, and it was an experience. More on that later, though. These mushrooms have a very unique smell, making them super easy to identify. Some people describe it akin to like a cucumber or watermelon rind. Watermelon rind. Personally, it gives me like a floral kind of soapy or perfumey smell. And after I like touched them and picked them up, the smell stayed on my fingers the entire hike. And I just caught myself like as I would like, I was taking pictures of my camera and stuff. As my hands would get close to my face, I just like smell it. Mm, it smelled so good. You'd be most likely to find dried saddle in the wound of a living tree or maybe on a hardwood stump or log. They can grow alone or in overlapping clusters. In North America, they grow throughout a huge chunk of the year, starting in May through November, which is cool. Look at the mouse of beast. I know it's important to make predictions while you're doing experiments. Um, so you can draw conclusions. My prediction is that this is one that is going to taste the best because it's so small and young. And apparently young mushrooms just taste better. Not that I have any experience with that. This one will probably taste pretty good too. It's like really light colored. And then I think if one's going to taste bad, it's going to be this one because I know this one is older. I feel like it's going to be tougher. Yeah. As big as I'm gonna cut it up into smaller pieces, and then I'll fry it with oil, salt, garlic. Yeah, this one's really firm. It's even hard to cut through. This is what I've prepared. Some of the bigger one was just like too tough to even cut through. So I'm going to put that one out in the woods, and then this is medium, and then the small one. Chewy. <laughs> kind of greasy. That one's just really wet. I don't think they're for me.
I knew I needed to do something a little bit different with this one because there's a lot of brown and that was kind of lame. And then I had that idea to add the circle in the background and I used my compass, which I never get to use. So that was fun. Um, I'm really, really happy with how it turned out too. I think it has a lot of interest in texture while still being a good capture of the specimen and what it looks like in nature. Um, it gives you a little information because it has the scientific name as well as the colloquial name. So ultimately, super happy with this one. I hope you like what you saw and enjoyed watching the process. If you did, you can leave a like and subscribe to the channel. That's two really great ways to support my art. Um, I hope you have a great weekend and I will see you next time.